magnetic field force between two current carrying wires. Let's have two wires that are close to each other separated by distance D and they both have current going from bottom to up. We'll call this guy here wire A and wire B. Now each wire is going to create its own magnetic field. We've discussed that earlier. Now, if they each create their own magnetic field, there should be some interaction between these two wires, and that's what we're going to derive. So first, let's just look at wire A. Wire A generates a magnetic field, and here you see these loops, because at every point on wire A, you will have a magnetic field that circles around it, and you can use the uh, right-hand rule, the thumb rule, put your thumb pointing up, curl your fingers and you'll see that they're curling in a counterclockwise direction. Now at every point here where wire B is the magnetic field strength is mu zero times the current in I1 in wire A divided by 2 pi and the distance between the two wires which is D. So this distance here that's D. So let's just summarize what's happening here. I'm just worrying about the magnetic field that's created by wire 1 here, wire A, that current 2, which is going through wire B, feels. It is feeling this magnetic field. We have the same diagram from the preceding page, where we have our two wires, wire A and wire B. Wire A is generating a magnetic field, and wire B is within that magnetic field. So, we had this equation earlier where the force on a current carrying wire that's in a magnetic field is IL times B. Now let's, let's look at each one of these terms. First of all, the magnetic field over here is going into the page, so it's perpendicular at every point to wire B. So, we want to find the force on wire 2. Okay, so first what we have is we need the value, the magnitude of I2. So you can see here that's I2. We have the length of I2, which is L. That's not on the diagram, but it's this distance from here to here. And the magnetic field due to wire A, which is B1. So note how we have I2, all right, because we want to find the force on wire 2, but it's in the magnetic field by current 1, so it's B1. Now, we found B1 from the previous slide, okay, so let's, let's go back there for a second. B1 is mu zero I1 over 2 pi D. We come back to our page and we plug that in for B1. So this term here came from the previous page. So I have I2, I have I1, I have L, I have the distance. I do a little rearranging of this equation to make it look prettier. I put the eyes next to each other. And the force that wire A exerts on wire B due to its magnetic field is mu zero I1 times I2 times L divided by 2 pi D. Now I could do a similar analysis for the force that wire B over here exerts on wire A in which case I would draw wire B's magnetic field, which would extend over here, and in this case it would be coming out of the page, and that's, that's what wire I1 would feel. Or I could just take a shortcut. Newton's third law. Newton's third law doesn't just work for mechanics. It also works for electricity. It works for magnetism. So whatever force that wire A exerted on B, wire B must exert on wire A. So I'm just going to take that shortcut for now, and the force that each wire exerts on each other is mu zero I1 I2 times L over 2 pi D.